Hello and welcome back to your Pennsylvania Dutch Minute. You know, for a couple weeks there, I had sponsors that I was highlighting uh, at the beginning of all my videos, but uh, apparently for the last couple of weeks, I haven't been getting any spons new sponsors. So if you run a business or a website in that deals with something Pennsylvania Dutch, I would absolutely love to give you a shout out here on my YouTube channel, which reaches over 7,000 subscribers now. And I would like to thank all my subscribers for being loyal and continually watching the videos. But if you have a business that deals with something Pennsylvania Dutch or a website or you sell something that's Pennsylvania Dutch, please reach out. And I would love to give your business a shout out right here on my YouTube channel. I'll scratch your back if you scratch my back. But we don't have one this week, so we're going to jump right into our topic at hand. I got an email a while back from someone that was asking the question, Hey, I've heard that, of course, there's Pennsylvania Dutch, but what is this Platt Deutsch or Platt Deutsch or Low German that I hear of? I heard something about Mennonites speaking that. What's the deal? What's the difference? Are they the same thing as Pennsylvania Dutch? And I would thank the person that sent that question in. And let's talk a little bit about the dialect of Plautdeutsch, or what's sometimes known as Low German. So today it's Pennsylvania Dutch or Pennsylvania German versus Plautdeutsch. So a little bit of background. Of course, we have to start with the history. Plautdeutsch, or what's sometimes known as Low German, or also sometimes known as Mennonite Low German, is a Low Prussian dialect with Dutch influence that developed in the 16th and 17th centuries in the Vistula Delta area of Royal Prussia. The word Plautdeutsch translates to flat or Low German, and Deutsch meaning German. Plautdeutsch is spoken by roughly around uh, 400,000 Russian Mennonites, most notably in the Latin American countries of Mexico, Bolivia, Paraguay, Belize, Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay, as well as in the United States and in Canada. Plautdeutsch, an East Low German dialect, was a German dialect like others until it was taken by Mennonite settlers to the southwest of the Russian Empire starting in 1789. From there, it evolved, and sub sub subsequent excuse me, waves of migration brought it to North America starting in 1873, and mostly from there to Latin America starting in 1922. Plautdeutsch speakers today are mostly the descendants of Mennonites who fled from what is today the Netherlands and Belgium in the 16th century to escape persecution and then resettled in the Vistula Delta. They took with them their Dutch, West Frisian, and Dutch Low Saxon dialects, which over time mixed with East Low German dialects of the region. As Mennonites, they kept their own identity and their language, of course. Beginning in the late 18th century, the expanding Russian Empire invited Germans and many from the Kingdom of Prussia, including Mennonites, to create new colonies north of the Black Sea in an area that Russia had recently acquired in one of the Russo-Turkish Wars. This is now part of the current day Ukraine, as well as other countries in that region. Beginning in 1873, many Plautdeutsch-speaking Mennonites migrated from the Russian Empire to the United States and Canada. In 1922, as previously mentioned, Plautdeutsch speaking Mennonites from Canada started to settle in Mexico and in 1927 in Paraguay. In the 1930s, Mennonites emigrated mainly from the Soviet Ukraine directly to Brazil. Plautdeutsch is primarily a spoken language, like Pennsylvania Dutch, and does not have an official orthography, like Pennsylvania Dutch. However, there have been attempts to create a written form of the language. One of the main issues facing the development of an official orthography is the variation in pronunciation among various speech communities. Other hindrances to the unification of the language is the fact that most Plautdeutsch speaking people are not found in one geographical region, being spread across Canada, the United States, Mexico, Central America, and South America. Despite the absence of an official orthography, there are quite a few written texts in the Plautdeutsch language. A significant example is the Bible, whose New Testament was published in 1987, and the complete version subsequently published in 2005. It shares grammatical and lexical similarities with other varieties of Low German, and in general, it is intelligible to other Low German speakers after some acquaintance. According to a study done in 2016, completed by Ethnologue, there are an estimated 357,000 Plaut speakers around the world. Trying to find numbers for just the United States is difficult. I did some research. Some estimates are around 12,000 speakers found mainly in parts of Kansas, Texas, and California. 
So there you go. I did some quick research. I mean, I was familiar with Plout Deech. Um, I have had the opportunity to watch some videos on YouTube of speakers and given my knowledge of Pennsylvania Dutch, but also my knowledge of standard German, I'm able to understand it when it's being spoken. I would say um, better than 75% of it I can understand. Of course, there are going to be words there that I've never heard of before, having that Dutch influence or having that northern German influence, given my experience in more southern German uh, dialects and central German dialects. But it's it's fascinating nonetheless. And of course, we, we might might not share a linguistic history with the Plout Deech speakers, but we do we do share a common uh, origin story in our birth, our groups being born out of the Protestant Reformation in Europe in the 1500s. Um, I don't know. I, I mentioned Kansas, Texas, and California. If there are viewers out here of my YouTube channel that know of Plout Deech speakers in other parts of the United States, in other, maybe other Midwestern states like Illinois, Indiana, uh, Wisconsin, please let us know in the comment section below. Also in the notes of this video, I'm including a link to a YouTube video by a Plout Deech speaker that's teaching people some basic Plout Deech phrases. Please check it out. As if you understand any Pennsylvania Dutch, you might actually be able to understand some of it as they're speaking. It's a really fascinating story. It's another story that most Americans don't exist, you know, don't know, excuse me, that this language exists, let alone is spoken in the United States. Uh, what's really fascinating to me is how this language and this culture and these people have spread, particularly to Latin America and South America, where their numbers are way bigger than they are here in North America. So what can we call them? Maybe we can call them cousins to Pennsylvania Dutch. Let's let's leave it at that. We're related. Of course, we share some commonalities, but we also have some differences. So I'll say Plout Deech, this is my professional or personal opinion. Let's call him a Plout Deech is a cousin to Pennsylvania Dutch. So great question. Thanks for those types of questions. It makes me also do a little research and makes me learn some stuff. So I really appreciate that. If you have an idea for a future video, please email me. Or if you have a question about something Pennsylvania Dutch related, language, culture, history, ask away. I'll do my best at answering. And if I don't know it, I'll reach out to my friends who are experts in other fields that probably can help me figure out at least an answer to give and share with all of you out there. Again, if also, and I'll shout out to what I said earlier at the beginning of the video, if you run a business or if you have family or friends that run a business in Pennsylvania Dutch country that would like a shout out here on my YouTube channel, send me an email and let me know. If you have a website that features Pennsylvania Dutch things, let me know. I'd love to give you guys some shout out as well on YouTube. Remember, over 7,000 viewers to this channel alone. That's not counting the people that watch the videos that aren't subscribed. So reach out. Let me know if you would like to get a personal business shout out or if you have a question for a future video. My email address is at the end of each video. And as my son says at the end of each video, until next time, keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch. Stay inquisitive. Keep learning. Be proud of our culture, language, and history. And Mox Goot. Mox Goot!